Hi guys, welcome to the Wargaming Power. I am David and today we're going to be talking about cockatiel care. Now this is my beginner's guide to cockatiel care. So if you've just got your bird, I'm hoping you'll find this very useful. If not, maybe there'll be some tips for you as a more experienced bird owner. This is one of my more requested videos and one of the more requested videos we get on Instagram. So I thought I will do an all encompassing guide for you guys who are just getting into cockatiel ownership and you just want to provide the best possible life for your little birds. I have two cockatiels. Chip and Fish, they have their Instagram account which is very popular. They're very naughty, very cheeky and very different personalities. When we first got them it was very exciting, very nervous, a very nervous time. I'd had cockatiels in the past and they all had very different personalities but I didn't actually know everything I did in the past and so I thought that this video would be very useful to convey everything I've learned about having a cockatiel both from what I've learned through study and research and just being an owner. The first part of my beginner's guide is bonding. Bonding is very important because you really want your bird to be happy with you and relaxed with you and to have all those lovely interactions you see maybe on Instagram or on YouTube, all those lovely singing videos and all that sort of thing. So it's really important that you get bonding right. Something we, I and we here through our business and through our Instagram, a lot of questions is, I've just got my cockatiel home, it's been there for a day or two, it's biting me, it's scared of me, why isn't it bonding with me? You need to give your little one time. It's like when you move into a new house, it takes you time to settle in. So when, even if it's hand tame, when you get it home, give it time to settle in, give, give it at least a little while, just so it can get used to you, your routines and all sorts of things like that. Don't rush to stick your hands in, don't rush to get it out, because this is a mistake I have made before, where I've got this magical moment of one cockatiel where I just got it out, it was straight on me and happy. These guys were not the same. They came out, they panicked because I was trying to recreate that magic moment. So don't do that. Give it some time, settle in, give it food, relax with it. Just let it enjoy being around you. So I've got a video on bonding if you'd like to watch it, which I'll leave a card for now. But just to sort of shorten it down a little bit if you haven't got time for that. Sit with your cockatiel, talk to it, do your normal things around it. Um, feed it through the bars of the cage and find its favourite treat, because that will help with a lot of training and stuff later. For most cockatiels, their favourite treat is millet. It's an awesome treat, although do give it in moderation. For other cockatiels, maybe it'll be a sunflower seed. Again, moderation. Um, chip is part of broccoli, which is great, because it's a vegetable. But yeah, find its favourite treat, feed it through the bars, and just relax with it. And then, after a while it's settled in, then try the whole hand thing and the other bonding exercises. My second tip is dust. Cockatiels are exceptionally dusty birds. They're part of the cockatoo family. So if you've got any sort of health condition with related to breathing or like asthma, do be aware that if you've got your cockatiel, it's gonna be a problem potentially. But this is something you can alleviate through getting an air purifier. We bought one, it makes the world of difference. You can also do some really simple things. Like if you see your cockatiel fluffing your shoulder, hold your breath and turn your head away. Because all that dust is going to come a lot, come off and go into the air. And if you don't get an immediate mouthful of it, it's going to help you a little bit. So get an air purifier, be aware that they are dusty, and just keep an eye on it and make sure you hoover around them regularly, that sort of thing. Doing these sort of things will help sort of limit the amount of dust they produce. Excuse the mess on the floor, this is our air purifier which we got from Amazon. We just run it a little while a day and it just helps to remove some of the dust from the air. It also helps with any smells or anything. It's just useful to have, even if you don't have birds, but... If you have cockatiels, it's especially useful because it just helps to keep that dust level down. So my third thing is diet. Now diet is quite a big section and I don't want to go too much into it. My partner Sophie has videos on it and I will leave a card here if you want a lot more detailed description. Here's just going to be a beginner sort of like uh, run through of diet. Now a lot of people think that and a lot of bird breeders and shops, pet shops will tell you that a cockatiel's primary diet is seed. This is not true. Seeds should make up only a small part of your bird's diet. There's nothing wrong with giving them some seed, because some people say they shouldn't have any. I, I disagree with that. Just make sure you give them some seed. A seed should maybe be about, I don't know, 10 to 20 percent of their diet. The rest should be made up of fresh fruits, vegetables, herbs, 
pellets if you can get access to them and all sorts of things like that. It's just like with humans, we need a balanced diet to be healthy, we need a bit of everything. It's the same with cockatiels. So, say you've got your 10 to 20% of seed, great. Make sure that you provide them fresh veg and chop. Chop is something very common people do. It basically just means chopping up vegetables and shoving it in their food. If your cockatiel doesn't really like vegetables, chopping it very finely can help. You can provide a little bit of fruit. Fish absolutely loves banana, which chips hate. Chip hates it. But you can offer all sorts of things. Pellets also provide a um, sort of alternative to get them their essential vitamins and fruit, uh, vitamins and fruit, vitamins and minerals and all that sort of essential things they need. But it's important you pick the right pellet. You can't just pick any old pellet. Some pellets are high in sugar. Some pellets aren't the best for your bird. We use Harrison's or Tops, and I'll provide links in my description so you can check them out yourself. Both of them are very good, and both of them are quite. Mm, a little bit easier to get your bird eating than some of the other ones. I mentioned herbs as well. Herbs are a great, easy way of providing your bird some fresh food. There's a uh, fish landing on his thing there. Um, providing your bird a little bit of an alternative snack. But herbs are also good for enrichment because it encourages them to sort of like forage and buy it. You can get most common herbs from your supermarket as long as they're fresh and they're untreated. You can get stuff like mint, you can get rosemary, you can even get stuff like basil. These are all edible, all you have to do is wash them. Fry them fresh and wash them and your birds will enjoy them and enjoy ripping them up. Just thought I'd show you a, a example of a typical chop. This one Sophie's prepared. She chopped it very fine because our boys can be a bit fussy with their vegetables apart from broccoli, which they love. But in this chop, it's just um, very finely chopped broccoli, some bell pepper if you're in America, or red peppers, green peppers, that sort of thing if you're in the UK. Um, carrot, there's some peas, and there's some sugar snap peas in there as well. It's just something you can add to your bird's diet that gives them something a bit healthier. And it just makes it more interesting for them as well, so they can pick around for their seeds, they can pick in it and they can enjoy it, and you know they're getting something healthy and good for them. My next thing is cage setup. Cage setup is very important because that's basically your bird's home, and it's where they're gonna rest and spend a bit of their time. So when you have your cage, something I've said in previous videos, and I also have a video on cage setup, which I'll leave a link for in the description because I can't put too many cards in here, um, is get the biggest cage you can, biggest cage you can accommodate, put that cage somewhere where it's gonna stay, you don't really want to be moving around a lot so when you're setting them up. Get the cage in the place you want it to be and make sure it's situated well. And then make sure you have plenty of toys in there for them. Make sure you have the right perches. All of these cages come with dowel perches which aren't very good for your bird's feet. They can just irritate them. And it's better just to have um, all natural perches. You can buy really cheap natural perches from Amazon for a couple of pounds or if you're in America a couple of dollars. These perches are great for the bird's feet because it wears down their nails a little bit and provides, uh, provides them slightly different diameters for their feet because it exercises their feet in that way. And I also mentioned toys. Now, lots and lots of toys are great. Your bird is just like you as a human or a small child. They want to do lots of fun things and they want to do things with their beak and chew and explore. So having lots of different toys is great. You want to, uh, toys that they can chew on, that they can exercise their natural behaviours with. Stuff like bells and mirrors are very popular, but neither I would recommend. Mirrors encourage hormonal behaviour because they get frustrated because they think there's someone else there, but there's not. Bells can damage their tongues if they have sharp edges. Um, if you really want a bell in there, occasionally we allow them one. If it's supervised, it's fine, but do keep a very close eye on how they interact with it. Cotton rope perches as well, there are a lot of bad toys. Cotton rope perches aren't recommended because they can chew them and ingest them, which is very bad because you can get stuck in their crop. However, if you do get a cotton rope perch, you can have them in a cockatiel's cage, provided they're not chewing them. So if you get one and you just want to put it in there, keep a very close eye on it. Any signs of chewing, straight out. They're leaving it alone, they're not really bothering, they're just walking on it. You can leave it in there as long as you keep an eye on it. As an alternative, I'd recommend sisal rope, because sisal, they can buy it, and there's no real issues there, hello Mr. Chip and it's much safer for them. Again, there's an awful lot to cover with toys, so I don't want to overload you. Short and quick, biggest cage possible. Make sure they have plenty of toys. Make sure you have plenty of perches, and if you can, provide metal um, food bowls because they can um, make it easy to clean and they're a lot more hygienic. I'd also like to mention you can consider substrate at the bottom of your cage instead of bars. Bars are bad for your bird's feet, and it kind of cuts off part of the cage. Again, this is a bit of a controversial area, so I'm not gonna to go too much into it, 
But bars versus substrate is a video I have and I will leave a card for here because I think it's important that you as a new bird owner should consider both options. So I'm just going to pan the camera around in here in our cage so you can see the sort of toys and bits and pieces we have in their cage. You can see here we have um, a custom perch which was made for us. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to the person who made it. Um, we have lots of toys here. You can see this one's been absolutely shredded to bits. This is by Planet Pleasures. They're all made by Bamboo and Natural Materials. Hello Fish. Um, Chip has been considering playing with this one over here. We have one um, sort of um, rope toy here which we only put in when it's, we're about so we can supervise them. Um, you can see sort of like all sorts of bits and pieces here. We have sort of bamboo toys so they can shred and enjoy them. A big sisal rope. There's just lots of things knocking about. We even got an egg carton filled with some sort of like bedding material along with um, some millets they can forage around in there. Um, just quickly as well, you can see that these perches here, these are cheap ones you can get from Amazon, they're perfectly fine, just give them a quick clean and they're sorted. Also have a sanding perch, just basically all sorts of bits and pieces in here to keep them entertained, um, different sort of things for their feet to get exercise on and all sorts of bits and pieces just to provide the best environment we can while they're not out and about. I just wanted to mention while I'm panning around, you can see some of their outside toys and a few of the other bits and pieces there. Um, cockatiels are very messy, with substrate they're kicking it out, but even if they're not, and they haven't got a substrate, they're going to kick out their food. They're going to go to the toilet everywhere, and you have to be aware to clean that up. So if you do have a carpet, it might be worth investing in a steam cleaner. As long as you only use not water with no additives, and just um, keep on top of it, it's worth it, to be honest. So if you've got a cockatiel, you may have got it from a breeder, and it may have been hand tame. It may have also come from a pet shop. It may not be hand tame. Alternatively, you may have got a rescue. And there's big differences in how you should treat these birds. If you've got um, a bird from a breeder like these two were, it's nothing wrong with that. Some people will tell you that's bad, but that may be the right choice for you. Normally they're better, and they're easier to bond with. I wouldn't say, sorry, better isn't the word. They're easier to bond with and they're more relaxed around humans because they're used to it. If you've got one from a pet shop and they're not used to being around humans, it'll take a bit more effort, but there's nothing to say that it won't be just as much of a rewarding experience. Rescues may be used to people, but they may have behavioral problems. They may be angry or scared. So you need to work with them. Just be aware where you get your bird from will impact how you have to interact with it and how that bird will grow to bond with you and what you can do to help it along. I also wanted to touch on singles and pairs. Now, me and Sophie always recommend if you can, keep your cockatiels in pairs because it gives them some of their own species to interact with. If you do get a single cockatiel, for whatever reason, that's fine, but just make sure you don't provide a mirror and you provide that bonding with it. It's even fine to just put cockatiel um, sounds on your computer or videos. That is absolutely fine, but the mirror will just cause frustration. So if you've got a pair of cockatiels, the interaction may be slightly different, but please be aware that some people say that if you get a single cockatiel, they're gonna bond with you much quicker and much better. I wouldn't say that's true. Chip and Fish are a pair and they're quite happy with us. They're just as bonded to humans as a single bird would be. So please bear that in mind when you're getting one. This leads me on to personalities. Cockatiels are very varied in their co uh, cockatiel personalities. Some may be very boisterous and loud like chip, some may be slightly more quiet like fish. They're all very individual and it also varies on whether they're male or female. For example, males will sing, they will chat more, potentially even learn some words. Males will also be a little bit more aggressive. Females will tend to be quieter, but not always necessarily less noisy. And they tend to sing less and they may not even sing at all. So each cockatiel is different and they'll have their own pace of bonding with you. They will do different things in their own ways. Please bear that in mind. Say for example, you see a video of us with um, fish and chips. Let's just get fish here on my hand. Fish steps up onto my hand instantly. That's fine because that's how he is. That's his personality. He's quite happy to sit on my hand. Another cockatiel may not be due to its experiences, due to its personality. So you may need to bear that in mind and take some time with it. Chip loves learning new tricks and, and toys and he's so good at it. Fish is not, so just keep that in mind. And I know I'm repeating myself here, but every cockatiel's personality is different and there's so many factors at play. So you can't use a sort of a one brush fits all approach with them. 
just take a holistic approach, look at their whole lifestyle, look at their whole personality and adapt yourself to them and you'll have a very rewarding experience that way and your full seal will be an amazing companion for you. So I touched upon dust earlier. Cockatiels molt very regularly. Molting is basically like when um, a snake sheds its skin. Instead with a bird, they're shedding their feathers. So don't be alarmed when your bird starts having feathers fall out. As long as they're not actively plucking them out, as in like pulling them out, which will have an audible sound, um, these feathers will be falling out as part of a natural process. And when they're like this, they tend to get a bit moody and grumpy and some may ask for pets if they're bonded with you. Others may be like, don't touch me. And there's ways you can help with this as well. So I've actually got a video on helping with molting, which I'll leave a card for here. And yeah, and a very simple way you can help them is bathing. Cockatiels love bathing. Um, some like to be blown on and that's air bathing, that removes some dust and some of the irritating things going on there. And also soothes a little bit. But they also love bathing with water. You can provide a, sh a shallow dish for them to bathe in, or you can spray them with a spray bottle. And this helps them get some of that nasty dust off and helps loosen those feather casings. They're very itchy feather casings when they're forming new feathers, and it helps them loosen them up and get those off, basically, so the new feathers can grow in. This um, is also important because they might have blood feathers, which may come out in um, various circumstances. They have a little crash on the floor, or if they have a knife, which I'll touch on a little bit later. The traditional image for many cockatiels, so this is changing, is a cockatiel sat in a cage and not doing very much. I've touched on toys and interaction and what you need to do, but cockatiels need a lot of interaction outside the cage and they also need a lot of exercise. Um, I'm not saying grab your cockatiel, take it outside and let it fly off because that's exactly what it'll do. It'll get scared and fly off, don't do that. But if you've got a large living room where the cockatiel is or you've got a dedicated bird room, that's great. Get them out when you can, when they're safe and comfortable with you and let them fly around. They need plenty of exercise. For chip and fish, for example, we send them one into the room and we call them down to us. Then we send them back up and we let them fly up and down. We also let them fly wherever they want in the room when they feel like it. And it's very important they get this exercise because it strengthens their wings. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this, but some people say you should clip the bird's wings. I don't approve of this unless it's for a medical or valid reason. Um, they're birds. They should be flying. It's natural for them. Again, not going to go too much into that. It's also important while I'm talking about this, they have lots of time outside the cage with you. Um, I've mentioned this in my Should You Get a Cockatiel sort of video, and I'm going to mention it again here. Let your cockatiel out when you can and when it's safe to do so. And once you're bonded or once you feel com com confident, <laughs> there you go, confident handling them and get them to step up. And then let them fly around, but also spend time with them. Let them sit with you while you're doing stuff. Let them play and do things outside the cage. When they're outside the cage, let them play with other toys. So you can get toys for inside the cage, you can get toys for outside the cage. And you can get sort of like things like stands, you can get like balls, um, you can set up a foraging tray, which is very easy. Just get some shredded paper, Get a very shallow tray and then sprinkle some of their treats in there they can just enjoy that while they're out and about but get them lots of toys and let them enjoy things and let them out as much as possible
So this leads me on to cockatiel dangers. When your cockatiel's out and about, you may want to take it around the house, which is very common and normal. There's lots of common dangers that you should be aware of. I'm not gonna go into all of them because there's so many, but I will touch on a few. If you want to learn about all of them, or a very extensive list, my girlfriend Sophie has a video on dangers, common dangers to cockatiels, which I'll leave a card for now. But in the meantime, let me talk about a few of the more common ones. So, dangers to your cockatiels. You can imagine fire, fireplaces, kitchen hobs, boiling water, that should go without saying. But there's some other dangers you need to be aware of. Um, dietary dangers. Human food is not good for cockatiels. Stuff like alcohol, coffee, fatty foods, meats, they're toxic. Do not let your cockatiel anywhere near them. A little crumb of bread is not really gonna do them any harm, that's fine, but keep them away from your human food. Give them their own little plate or something or treats that they can have to keep them from um, eating stuff. And similarly with vegetables, I mentioned about vegetables and chop, avocado, avoid it, toxic, again. So other common dangers, um, wires, don't let them chew on wires, you wouldn't let your cat chew on wires, it's dangerous. Non-stick pans, exceptionally dangerous. Non-stick Teflon stuff can really be harmful to your birds, so if you have that, do not cook it around them. If, you, if it's far, far away in the house, even then it might be a danger. At the very least, I'd recommend shutting your door to the kitchen, shutting the door to their room, and keeping them well away from it. Candles. My girlfriend Sophie loves candles. We don't have any candles anymore because, again, they're very dangerous. The only thing you can have is if you really want candles in your life still, or say, for example, you want to burn them in your bedroom for a romantic mood or whatever, make sure they're unscented completely. Like, simple tea lights, unscented, that is fine, um, as long as it's not in the same room as the birds, because it can be very harmful to them. Um, similarly, other pets can be a danger to a cockatiel. You see so many videos of people with cats and um, birds agitating each other. Um, in some situations, yes, you know, if the cat's been in the house for ages and they're well used to each other, it's like they've both been brought in at similar times, even then, uh, it's there's still a danger. But if you've just brought your cockatiel home and you've already got a dog or a cat, an accident may happen, and the last thing you want is to try and you know force that interaction and something happening. So not to be preachy, but please do bear in mind that they shouldn't really be mixing. You should be very careful, and it should be exceptionally supervised if you're burning out when you have a dog or a cat around. Because the last thing you want is just one unpredictable accident, one little thing happening, and it's just the worst. We've seen that happen too many times, and people will ask for advice afterwards. So just don't invite it. The point is first aid. There are actually things you can do for your cockatiel if they get injured. For example, if a blood feather comes out, blood feathers are when a new feather's forming and there's still actually blood in there and it gets torn out because they have a night fright or a nasty crash. So if you have a, a bleeding cockatiel, what can you do? Instead of panic, there are some things you can do. Cornstarch is one of your best friends. It's a common thing you can get from any supermarket and it's excellent for stopping bleeding on cockatiels. So if you have uh, blood feathers come out, and your cockatiel will let you touch them. Just get some cornstarch on your finger and gently rub that area. Just don't try and get too much on it, just get a bit on there. And that will stop that bleeding and give it a chance to clot and it will hopefully sort of alleviate some of the irritation there. It's not harmful if they ingest a little bit of it either, which makes it even better and safer. Similarly, if your bird does get injured, cayenne pepper is also an excellent um, common thing you can have around your house. Cayenne pepper is a natural anti-inflammatory and also it helps with pain. So if your cockatiel's hurt itself, maybe it's just injured its foot or it's had a blood feather as I previously mentioned, you can sprinkle a bit of cayenne pepper on their food and that will help ease a bit of that. Now if you, again I must say, if, your cockatiel, if you think your cockatiel's badly injured or you have a concern, you should go and consult a vet because ultimately this is your companion, you want it to be okay. It, sorry, him or her to be okay, and you want to take them to that vet and make sure that they get the best possible care. So if you have a really um, strong concern, take it to the vet and don't hesitate. So one of the most common problems with cockatiels that leads to injury and also um, owners freaking out thinking, oh my goodness, what the heck is going on, is night frights. Now cockatiels are exceptionally prone to night frights. And night fright is basically something spooks them in the middle of the night, they flap around like crazy and they potentially knock out blood feathers or hurt themselves. This is very common and normal for cockatiels. Now there's some certain steps you can take to help with night frights. And one of the most common steps that people take, and one of the easiest, is simply providing a night light. Just a little night light you would have in a plug for a child. You can also get sort of like, um, uh, sort of like a pop-up night light. We have a little chick that we have for the boys. And this just helps them see their surroundings. And if something does shift or fall during the night, 
there's less likely to stress out about it and it may prevent some of them. Now night frights can be caused by loud noises and all sorts of things. So if your cockatiel is having night frights a lot, it may be worth uh, moving to a different location or just keeping an eye on the environment and just making preparations for things. For example, in the UK or we have Guy Fawkes night in the US, you might have Independence Day with lots of fireworks going on. So if that's happening, you can just have the light on all night on a low level just to make sure that they're um, feeling more comfortable and they're less likely to be scared. So that brings me to the end of my video. I've tried to cover as much as I could for you as a beginner cockatiel owner so you can be best prepared for how to care for your bird. I'll leave lots of links in the description so you can look at other videos and you can look at sort of things you can get for them and hopefully you'll find this useful. If you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any ideas or any suggestions of your own that you'd like to give to beginner bird owners that's also very cool. I'd love to hear them too. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.